Hello, and welcome to an open source live code hangout. We'll be working today on the Western Friend website. We're migrating an existing website from the Drupal content management system over to Django and Wagtail CMS. We've got a lot of uh, code written. Many of the features are fairly mature, nearing completion, if not already completed, we're not exactly sure. Still some uncertainty, but we're preparing some scripts to migrate the content. So what we need to do is essentially set up exporters on the existing website, bring the data uh, down to my local computer at this time, and import them into the Wagtail Drupal uh, Django database. Here I've got some local working data. And we've got our data model here. What I'm working on is a particular um, content type. We have some organization documents. The Western Friend organization is a legally incorporated organization in the United States. And as such, they have published um, several documents about their operations such as financial reports and minutes uh, policies and procedures so these are not so uh, necessarily exciting from uh, a general reader's point of view but they're important for the uh, the legal life of the organization so we just need to import those those are public documents that we want to publish on the website fiscal year reports and things like that. So I've got a spreadsheet here, a little CSV. I've built a data model and I think we're, the data model is pretty much good to go. Just to give you an example of what the website looks like. Ah, yeah, sorry. So let's see, I wasn't quite ready for this Colima. We'll run uh, Colima, which is essentially a Docker daemon, but op fully open source. I think of it as, as a lightweight alternative to Docker desktop. Although I've got like a 2019 computer and a fair amount of RAM, I'm just trying to be conservative with my resources, even while developing without being on a live stream, uh, things can get pretty heavy. We've got multiple applications running. But with the live stream, that's adding a bit more intensive uh, workload on the computer. I can hear the fan running, for example. So once Colima runs, I think it's an all lightweight alternative. Uh, I haven't actually compared the resource consumption. It just, the computer does seem more responsive when I'm running Colima in the background rather than Docker desktop. So Colima is running. Now I can just run my regular Docker command. Uh, we're relying on a database, uh, Postgres database, and I've got a utility PG admin. So, you know, to make it easier uh, and not have to run that sort of locally hmm, as a developer, um, setting up Docker, uh, sorry, Postgres is a bit challenging and you don't want to always run it on your computer. And each operating system would have a different way of doing that. So I tried to make a general way of doing that by providing a Docker uh, compose file. So there we go, we've got it running. Uh, one thing I'm thinking about doing in this project is creating a development container, which will actually run everything all together with one command. As soon as you open VS Code, essentially, you'll be ready to run. You won't have to even worry about, well, you'd have to have Docker running, but that's about it. And VS Code will automatically build and uh, sort of build your docker container and put you in there <laughs> ready to develop so here we got the code ready in the um, database is running in the background I actually should have hit minus D for that but just open a new tab all right all right so CD into the app directory uh, Make sure there's no ling uh, lingering migrations. Actually, I should run make migrate. 
Oh, there was, yeah. Just to double check where I was, where I left off. I'm in the middle of a, a larger pull request. I'm trying to keep an eye on chat over here. I don't know if it shows me. It'll show me messages. So that's probably enough. I can make this a little bit bigger. I know I can't make it any bigger. All right, what if I pop out chat? Oh, that brings it up over here. Okay, that's cool though. That at least shows me more info. But not the number of chatters, so I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, there it is. It's just in chat. Very cool. All right, so yeah, give me a shout out in chat if you've got any questions or comments. Uh, you know, I'm figuring out things as I go, so I appreciate any assistance or if you notice a typo or a bug. Uh, yeah, just let me know. If you got other uh, ideas or projects you're working on. I'm also interested to see what's going on in the open source community. Okay, so essentially we have the data model set up. What I need to do is write a management command that's going to um, let me load this CSV into memory, iterate over each row, and create a corresponding object um, which will persist the data in the database. One of the things that's interesting here is a lot of these have multimedia attached, so like a PDF or something like that. So we're gonna have to um, ingest that as well in basically from the remote URL. Load those in, these are all public documents, but here's an example of the fiscal year report. So I'll actually load these in and save them into the local project environment static directory we have a static folder set up and in production we're using um, digital ocean spaces for that there we go oh when i pop out the chat it actually gets hidden behind the behind the obs screen so i'll just yeah. There we go, make it a little bit wider that way. All right, so I've done this prior, and what essentially we do is I have these uh, content migration app uh, and a series of com management commands to import all these different uh, data types. It's actually a very large website. We've got several different types. Um, import library is probably the closest because uh, it's a multimedia library. And some of the items are have um, PDF attachment. Alternatively, let me see if I've got import pages. Yeah. Oh yeah, and that's a typo there. I'll just fix that while I'm here. All right, so so far I've only got the, our pages are organized into several collections and these board documents are a particular collection. So I'm gonna probably need to just start from scratch. But what I can do is just copy this much. All right, we're gonna need some imports. So in Django, management commands are class-based. So from, let me see what's the import. Let's see if it'll help me out here. Not click, it's not click. Similar to click, it might even inherit from click.
and what else we got? Now I'll need the Essentially, I'm going to put these under. Yep, I need NumPy. <laughs> Thank you, Copilot. And we don't need the home page object. We need a reference to from public board documents. Where did I put this model? From app documents. And that's that. Oh, actually, I need the index page and the. So, and the model page. I'm going to pan this as PD as well. Yeah. That's correct. I will want that and I'll just save it as a variable. Index page is just basically like a folder where we're creating a bunch of records. Wagtail is using a page hierarchy, so everything has to have a parent and there's like a root page that's the default for the, a given Wagtail site. And, and Wagtail is also supporting multiple sites or multi-site, that means you can have uh, multiple websites running of, off of just one at Wagtail instance. So basically all these public board docs that we're going to import are going to go here under this index page and then I'll just I have already created a template template that uh, lists them out. Okay so then we're going to iterate over these and I'll just want a quick way of just seeing the progress of that so I'll just copy and paste this and change the daily documents in a row what is pass so not do anything and see if we can get that import for me yep We're not doing anything with document yet. All right, so basically the server I've got running here, uh, it's for illustrative purposes. All right, so it's just basically a website. The front end looks like however you want it. It could even be a React or Vue app uh, that renders everything. We're primarily using static HTML here. But the back end is uh, written by Wagtail and a lot of it is, I think, React. Nonetheless, it's a content management system and heavily inspired by WordPress. And in a lot of ways, I think it exceeds the WordPress um, well, developer experience, usability is also really good here. Uh, it doesn't have some of the flexibility of, that Wagtail has with the new block editor for front end editing and things. But uh, I think some of that is an intentional design decision by Wagtail. It focus, they focus mainly on the admin experience. They do have blocks, though. It does have a block based editing um, paradigm. So what we've got here under community is public board documents and essentially it's just data model here, but uh, in Python and uh, essentially they each document has a title We're categorizing them. Uh, they all you have to have a publication date and then some body detail. So this is where you know, we will embed a PDF or image. Um, quotes are used elsewhere on the site, probably not so much in the board docs. But nonetheless, this is a, the block-based editing approach that Wagtail uses. It sort of lets you add blocks and mix them around and delete them. 
So, I mean, it's pretty well designed and developed. We're not going to be using this uh, approach to import these board docs, although mm, ostensibly we could, but we'll try to save ourselves some time and just load them by a management command here. So I'll stop this server running real quick. So Django management commands basically use this um, file name as the command name. So we're running manage pi is like your multi-tool. Every management command in, that I did, uh, develop and uh, Django includes are accessible here. Import, and I can think it's got auto complete board documents takes a bit yeah now this one takes an argument file and my files are in well let's see I forget the name this data folder board documents and it's just gonna run over those and do it each of those and do it no op just make sure up at, up until this point uh, my code is you know bug free okay module yeah that makes sense so from uh, I think that's correct right well I can look over here tqdm yeah a little bit of dyslexia there it's an easy one though now ah, that should work so that's what I'm saying just try to catch these little things early uh, while your code is simple. Yeah, so that's it. TQDM just gives us this nice um, progress indicator. All right, I wonder if that stream elements is showing up. No, probably not. Stream elements chat is hidden. Okay. So there's 42 rows in the CSV. Let's double check that. This doesn't have a row count, but yeah, I think it should be right. Well, some of them are kind of heavy, uh, a lot of HTML. I'll have to parse that. That's going to be one of the first challenges we'll come to when we get to the body is how to parse this. Because um, this can, is arbitrary, and uh, well, unfortunately, I guess. But um, nonetheless, the reality is uh, we have a free form uh, content editor, a rich text editor on the existing website. And it just lets you, you know, I think it's fairly flat, but I don't know how nested it is, but it lets you basically construct the content however you want. Well, here's an example. We've got a nesting uh, paragraph with a link inside there. And there's probably list, list items. So I don't know how I'm going to approach this generally. It might just be that we treat all the old website content as trusted and just render out the HTML. And for new created website content, it'll use the more structured approach. That's the kind of minimum viable. Ideally though, I would parse this body into the new structured approach. And I don't know how <coughs> complicated that'll be. How many edge cases there would be that I would need to handle. I do have a general function for parsing bodies and media. So I'm trying to create composable software here. Uh, reusable. Okay, so we've got a working importer up to this point where it'll iterate over the rows. Now, essentially, we need to create a new board document from each row. So this is where we have to compare our model and the column headers. So uh, here's the model about board document and I think I'm pretty much done here we'll have to come back to this pages is as is relevant so uh, let me double let me just help myself out here so I'll create a new board document that's correct uh, okay actually let's just see that's right, that's actually right. Okay, this is, let's see what it does for us. 
Okay. Oh, this is where it's not going to work, but uh, <laughs> wow. Ah, uh, see, there we go. <laughs> it's getting a bit confused. Triple node ID, body, new, um, category. And I'm wondering, if, you know, I wouldn't obviously do this line by line like this and have, have these comments, but this is interesting how uh, interacting with the um, Copilot kind of can change your coding style where you start to describe the, well, the intention. I'm literally telling the computer what to do and it's just writing the code. Uh, and then I'll consolidate these, of course. So this is where I think A, yeah, my code style is changing a bit, but also B, you're still have, to, it's Copilot. You have to like know what you're trying to do and fix kind of silly errors. Like the dates though, that's a good one. Hmm. I see the file isn't even there. That's an interesting example. Media is there. <laughs> so I don't know where I got a file. And also, it's not aware. of the actual um, columns. So that's another example. It's doing pretty good. <laughs> and then we'll need to create a redirect. It's pretty good though and then oh yeah actually adding it to the index page this is right on that's right that's a good one should save it this won't work but the adding it to the index page will work mm, let's see what it does here it's not going to help me out there where I actually don't know what to do. It doesn't know what to do either. Wagtail just recently improved their Essentially, we're going to a new site structure. So all of our URLs are changing. I realized that I have been omitting redirects. Uh, where are we going? Core settings, base, redirects. Okay, we got that. Redirect middleware is there. All that Looking good.
All right, so this is all good. I'll need to get the base site. Okay, so let's see. I'll import this redirect class when I need that. <clears throat> That is correct. And um, let me get this. Uh... Yeah, so it's not quite. Ah, get sight. That's interesting. Maybe that works. <laughs> what? It does work. Crazy. So for many wagtail page, which essentially this is a page, this um, board document inherits from wagtail page. <clears throat> this public board document index page inherits from wagtail page. Man. <laughs> That's good. So there's an example of where the copilot is like ahead of like has ahead of my knowledge in a sense. In some ways, it's like completely naive. Well, it's like completely naive, I think, but definition doesn't have any awareness, but it's got statistical <laughs> insight. Uh, so yeah. That is correct. Wow. We will need that here. So let's try that again. But here it's not helping me. Okay. Well, pretty close. Let's see. Oh, yeah. That is correct. That is correct. That is correct. That is correct. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. GP, chat GPT. Copilot web development. I'm changing the title of this stream right now. I'm literally the copilot now. <laughs> the navigator. I guess I'm kind of the navigator. This is interesting. What is your role? when using an AI assistant. And when do you become the assistant of the assistant? Hmm. Interesting. Oh, Kesti lost a bit of my Connection to the chat screen. One moment here. Having some technical difficulties when transitioning over to my external display. Vroom. You have to do that, really. Creates. Anyway, I'll figure this stuff out later. All right. So yeah, my code is sort of, I would say 80% there, but the last 20% is I think where we're not gonna get help from the AI so much, the last 20% is gonna be left to me because these are all pretty much wrong. I'll save this nonetheless. So one thing is, oh, uh, actually, actually, those are probably right. It's this CSV uh, editor that I'm using viewer it capitalizes the column headers it's not correct to do that capitalization matters in computer this pro thing should not capitalize headers that is a bug excel viewer by grape city it's very popular but it is a bug to capitalize uh, headers in structured data because when you try to use that programmatically, it will not work if you have the wrong casing. Yeah, 
Yeah, okay. So there we go. This I just needs I need to just change this and we're good to go. The default should not be true here. All right, so where do we change these settings? CSV. That won't work, or my windows are split. All right, settings, CSV, capitalized headers. We'll see if we can just find that in the, I guess, code settings. Then we're good to go, because I was about to make a mistake. Misled. my CSV preview. Thank you though, at least I have a configuration. I do like line numbers, that, that helps me at least get a sense of the size of the data. Although I noticed it was really sluggish scrolling, so it might not be worth that at this point. Good to go. Now what do we do? Hey, let's, everything's good. Okay, so now back to the code. Uh, and for this case, let's go ahead and look at these. Look, well, let's see. Can I split it vertically? There we go. Ah. Vertical split. Okay. So we got title, title, publication date. Let's do it in the order of the. CSV columns just for simplicity title. Drupal node ID. document category body is going to be a bit different but I wonder if I can change the verb here and get a new line instead of set this is actually parts of the body if I can figure that one out this would require some that's correct. This is literally what I wrote, a shared parser. I think the imports are incorrect. This app is just a folder. It's not actually, I guess I could put a <laughs> in a, in a .py in here and then the imports would work, but it's not quite, it's a subfolder in the Git repository. Whoa, parse the documents by, parse the documents media. This is a little bit similar. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, actually, actually. This is going to uh, going into the body. Let me double check what this does. So if this is a list, the body is kind of a list of blocks. Let me make sure this returns a, um, a list of blocks. Ah, so I don't have this annotated, do I? Well, let's give myself some hints here. Yes, start adding types. Progressively. They're generic types, but yeah, nonetheless. We're just gonna return those, I think should be fine. Yep. So that's a list of blocks. Uh,
That is correct. That's probably correct. I can, I can, it's a little bit different handler, I think. Parse body box, body blocks is, it will need to create a block. So to doing it, I just asking to copilot to do it. Okay. That's correct. That's probably correct. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, some of the, you know, I've written this code. That was, um, basically it is a shared command. Whoops. So, well. See if it'll clean it up a little bit. One thing that this, you know, is doing is kind of making my mental work lighter. My, you know, I got a smooth brain. I, I need uh, simple, simple work. And I can't keep very much in my working memory, especially when I come back to this after months. There we go. So the more that the tool can help me out here, yeah, maybe the less error prone and the more velocity I can have when developing. Okay, cool. So we have worked through the media body media and body can be none so yeah if body is not none yeah parts of the document body if it is not empty Correct. All right. One of the things I believe is fundamental, uh, kind of a paradigm shift with these language models, is they're literally giving you a language interface. I can express what I'm trying to do in human language and not have to worry about as much of the, you know, curly braces or square braces or quotes or quote inside or quote outside or, uh, you know, is not empty. What, what if I said, what would that do? You know, if I do that, I just copy that. If it's not empty, that's more natural for me to say if it's not empty. Yeah, it's correct. And correct. So yeah, it's giving me a natural language interface to achieve my desired result. You know, I'm still working in a higher language le uh, level language, Python, and in, but now I'm a step closer. I'm actually where the tools in my domain, I'm like telling it in English, my natural language, and I'm hoping that these language models, uh, you know, start supporting if they don't already other languages as um, well as English. I know that there's not as big of a training 
data perhaps that's been compiled in other languages. This one, I picked it up that it could be none. So it's actually not even, uh, you know, inspecting the data. It's looking across my project probably. All right, so we got media and then the URL path. And I think that's it for the columns, right? That's it. And that, see, that's where it got incorrect, but it's all right. And yeah, these comments are a bit yeah, redundant, but we're looking good. Um, this might run as it is. If it runs, then I'm going to consolidate it a bit. Or why not leave it like this? That's okay. What I can just do is pop all these in here, though. For example, title. Type me data title. Uh, and let me double check my model then. Yeah, so that's it. it, it you know, just makes it a bit more concise there. And then the parts are more complicated. You know, naturally it can be split out. Wow. All right, gotta watch my humor, try not to make uh, inappropriate jokes, try to keep this channel <laughs> friendly. All right, so import board documents. Yeah, I like channels like Primogen, but sometimes he's a bit, you know, over the top. He's funny and very knowledgeable and quick. But yeah, I think, you know, over top humor can alienate people. All right, so let's see. Reading through these, I'm gonna do everything except uh, actually persisting the data. Because I wanna see if there's other errors in my code. Oikesty. Did I put that in? Do not disturb. So now we're going to run it. So yeah, I mean, it's not throwing any errors. It's kind of slow. Ooh, let's see one row a second because it's actually downloading these. I believe this function I wrote months ago is doing its job. Yeah, URL parser. I need to put this uh, into logging, but nonetheless, it, it'll print out any errors it encounters.
There's a list of tuples. Would that work if it returns an empty list? I'm not using, no, I'm using my pie here. Let's see if it uh, yells at me for that. Curly lint's a bit slow. I do like linting my templates though, but it doesn't need to run. Here we go, my pie doesn't like that. Or none. Maybe this works. Empty list. What do you do for an empty list? And where's the pipe character on my keyboard? <clears throat> oh man. Ah, there we go. Help me out there. It can be empty list. It's a tuple or none.
Hmm. All right. Well, nonetheless, okay, it works. Uh, yes, yeah, so and the next thing is just basically run the importer. Uh, saving the saving the documents and call this one good if it works yeah of course and it redirects or another thing let's actually save the document first and then I'll work at the redirects Oops. that's good no that's not what I wanted to do Yeah, there we go. First error. That's the value. This is the value of the label we display to the user. I'm not gonna be able to clean this up on the upstream side. I'm gonna to have to clean it up here. I have the information that I need. All right, so let's just take a look at this model. This is actually kind of tricky because I have an enum of um, key value pairs for the Django choices, field choices. So if we go here to documents and models, we've got public board document is the model. And then I've got these choices here. Each choice is a, uh, okay, very cool. Thanks, Smash Booker. Welcome to the channel. So each choice is a uh, a tuple, a key and value. So this is probably something Django specific, but what I want to do in my data, I have the, these should all match. I have the, essentially the value. This is the value we want to display to the user. Current year, prior years, annual reports in relation with monthly meetings. These should correspond. I just need a way of fetching this based on this. You know, I can hard code these, this is all right. There's probably a, an elegant way of doing it, but these choices are not gonna change. This is an importer, this is gonna kind of fall away. On a pragmatic level, I should probably just do a reverse lookup. Let me just Google search this one more time. Look up that's the other way around. Let me try with the Google search. Well, yeah, it's not clear to me how to do it. So let's go ahead, I'll write a little helper. Well,
Super. Somebody's encountered this pattern here. Not quite. Close though. I don't have the key. I need to get the key. No QA. Yeah. I'll just make a map. Filter. Mm. So dictionary. I mean, otherwise I'll use an if statement. Gosh. <laughs> yeah, just if. Can you help me with that? Nope. That's cool. And since it's just going to be really crude, just to get it done, if <laughs> category label equals string. Uh, it should be the value. There's got to be a simple way of doing this. None. Equals. So it's going to be this, and I need to reverse map it to that. It's just kind of mind boggling because it's kind of an enum with values that are tuples, and I don't have the capacity right now. I need to be very pragmatic in choosing my, val my battles here. Category value equals. That's correct. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. All right. Yes. That's correct. Yes. Wow. That's correct. Whoa. That is correct. I don't think we have any more. That's probably good for now. I'd logging as needed. And that's correct. Not bad, not bad.
All right, so now we'll rerun it. Making sure that we uncomment this. Hmm. If I look in the database real quick, let me see what it's storing. I think I have one one board document. Hmm. I think it was documents, plural models. Uh, model names are singular. Corporation documents. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, no. So it is, uh, that's just when I put in with the old data structure. That's actually not valid, but uh, yeah, this is correct. Mm. What I'm trying to do is correct. I mean, we're mapping it not to this, but to this. Did I forget the migration? Maybe that's what happened. Control D. When I change those labels, maybe that's what I forgot to do. No. And the error is the category cannot be none. Is there one without a category? And again, look closer to the traceback. So these are the kind of things that Copilot is just probably not of assistance with. It's uh, there we go. Ah, okay. Is there a space after it? did rely just on these directly from Copilot. So Uh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Subtle, but prior instead of previous. Yeah, it was interesting where it got the previous from. Previous does sound better. Current and previous. I don't know if I should change that or if it's... Let's look at Western friend. 
I'm gonna use whatever is in use on the site about us. Public board documents, corporation documents. They're using prior years here. Years is uh, current and prior. So I'll stick with that. There's an apostrophe there. <clears throat> anyway, well, I can fix the label at some point. Let's try to run the import now. I think it should work. I think we're good to go. With the redirect, let's let's do it all. I should do one thing at that. I don't know if I'm gonna need this save. So yeah, when this runs, we should have uh, content imported with uh, some kind of parsing of the body. I'll to validate that. Parsing of the media. Ooh. Huh. How do we not have? Unique URL path. That's weird. So our exporter. That is weird. How does that even work? This should have only one unique document, right? No, 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 actually, it's this one. Huh. Three of those. They're the exact same Drupal node ID. So my exporters got some kind of a bug. Almost should be a default, but okay. Uh, I mean, I think. Hmm. Let's apply to this view. <laughs> Um, oh no, man. All right, I'll have to make it resilient downstream. This is why we're 
not even Drupal. It's really cool. And this kind of view building in Drupal 7 is, uh, of course, improved in Drupal 8, 9, and now I think 10. But uh, pff, some of the flakiness and black boxiness, I don't know. I don't really read PHP or can get in there. So we'll just try catch it. Try. Try that. Except. Oh, where you go? This is another point I should probably check for uniqueness. Okay. Drupal node ID, there should only be one. So I can import that. From Django to be utilities. That's not gonna quite work, is it? Is it? Interesting. Let's check if it exists first. So we'll do a little deduping here. Here. That actually should mean that we don't have to worry about the integrity check here. But okay, let's just be doubly safe. Yeah. Yeah, this is really making a difference on my my brain to have this help from Copilot. Figuring out all these little nuances like filtering and uh, I'm kind of just able to explain it again <laughs> just in plain language what I'm trying to achieve and Copilot's helping me figure out some of these deep, you know, details which you know that Django and Python code is fairly expressive nonetheless like the order and syntax and you know semantics change and I'm kind of just using my own semantics in a natural language syntax so cool <laughs> I'm enjoying that all right so let's go ahead and run this again yeah halfway through so boom it's able to dedupe skip ahead Oh, cool. Is my chat working? So, I think so. What? I need to bring it over here. The chat overlay should be working. No, it's something else. Hey, hey, new one. New error. Category cannot be null. Back to that one, actually. Not quite new. There is a document with a null category. Okay, okay. Validation error. So, yeah, we'll have to catch that. This is cool, though. Let's make it. Uh, essentially, it's got to be here. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's correct. 
So actually this uh, Copilot's a little bit more useful than IntelliSense. Hmm, interesting. IntelliSense is supposed to be able to like actually scan the, well, the actual code and uh, find my imports for me. Okay, let's go again. I wonder if this is no. Mm. 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 Right. Okay. In that case, uh, the case where there uh, was a value error, whatever that previous error was, just handling. The save didn't occur. So up here, there's a case where the save, this validation error means the case didn't uh, save. Page didn't save. I need to continue to the next one. Pretty good. <laughs> when you write code with ChatGPT, should you give attribution to ChatGPT? And, and <laughs> when ChatGPT is using these open source codes, how do we give attribution for the statistical model? generated from those codes like how do we give attribution to the open source projects django and wagtail things that are going on i don't know hey these are large questions that are being debated and sorted out in uh, courts of law for example as we speak nonetheless it's a very useful tool i'd hope it doesn't get uh banned outright i mean it's really making a difference in my ability to think and create and be productive. Uh, but I would like to be able to use it in a way that honors, uh, you know, some, has ethical integrity. Very cool. I think we have our importer, man. I think we have our importer, everybody. Let's run that server and check it out. If I go to community public board documents, leaving this this form page, we're not importing a look at this. Would you look at that? And I look at one of them. <gasps> yeah. And and the other thing, <laughs> if I view it live, what does it look like? Hmm. Okay. Some work to be done but look at this document is hosted in my local project boom this is good uh, so yeah the thing here now would be commit push we've got a pull request open probably take a break I need to eat lunch wow this has been a great session today we used copilot to great effect to help reduce my cognitive load, uh, allowing me to write expressive language to describe how the code should behave, kind of, but not so semantic like Python. It's more like English. So I'm still coaching the, I'm basically coaching Autopilot to write correct and idiomatic Python. And Django and Wagtail. 
and even some of the idioms I've introduced in my project in the data structures. It's pretty effective. And essentially these uh, comments, they act as the prompts to get 80% um, of the code written for you with only minor changes, maybe even 90. It was a really surprising some of the things it was able to do. So yeah, the overall aim here is to be able to import content from an existing website, Wagtail, into a Wagtail website, including handling document attachments, PDFs. And in another session, I will continue working on the rendering, the output, but mostly this uh, template is working as it should. We have um, public board documents. Let me double check here. Yeah, and they're listed. Uh, there's a couple of bugs in the thing here, but uh, oh, because I didn't, huh, I'm not sure exactly. Oh, this is an old one. This, this, uh, there's not a label for this. This was old data uh, from pre migration. But nonetheless, they should take this label and sort of, you know, just uh, this, take this key and display the label. Yeah, so we populate a list. Ah, and this is interesting. The grouping is in, is broken. So there's clearly some more work to be done in this board documents uh, pull request that I've opened here on GitHub. If you'd like to check out this code, stop by github.com slash Western friend. And it's the WF website project. The pull request, I will link in the chat. I don't know if that's useful on Twitch or not? Probably not at this point. I don't think it uh, matters. Maybe can't paste into can't paste today. Can't paste into OBS today. Yeah, whatever. Here it is. Six fifteen. Western friend WF website. Uh, I haven't committed these changes, but they will be there shortly. And yeah. I'm open to any suggestions or feedback. If you've got a project you're working on and you'd like me to check it out, let's start promoting our open source work. Anyway, thanks for stopping by the stream. And if I've uploaded this to YouTube, thanks for checking out the YouTube video. Have a great day. Hope to see you around.